My name is Susan Chen and I am currently an artist in residence at Silver Art Projects and we are at Four World Trade Center. We are the second year who are here for the residency program so it's pretty much like fairly new but I wanted to show you my studio um, and these are you know some paintings. This is my work table that I actually had a friend who lives in Harlem built for me and he carried it to my studio on the subway which I thought was wild. Um, I don't know if you can see but the views in my studio are pretty cool. You can see the Statue of Liberty over there, the World Trade Center, um, the Twin Tower memorials, um, and um, yeah I feel pretty spoiled. But this place does, I mean, I think being in this space really does actually keep you like, I want to say like grounded or like humbled in some ways because it comes with all this history um, and it's such a privilege to just be on this floor working with other artists. I actually applied here to work primarily with Chinatown communities because Chinatown is, you know, only like 10 minutes away. It's really close by. Actually, you know what? Let me show you. Okay, here is a print that we made for all the sitters in the painting. And so this is one of the paintings that I made earlier this year, working with Chinatown Block Watch, a local patrol group um, that formed during the pandemic. And it was great to have them sit in the studio. They all came in, um, sat for the painting. Um, and it was, it was interesting because they're sort of an older demographic. Um, and I think, you know, like young people are more used to having their faces like, you know, on social media or on paintings. So it was really fun to have sort of like a different demographic of sitters come through for this painting. So then I got really into these large group portraits um, because they're really challenging and uh, it feels a bit like running a mini marathon. And so I made this painting over here. I just made it like an open call and any of the artists who wanted to be in the painting could be in the painting. Um, so here's some of my artist friends uh, from the residency. Um, Corey and Josh, who started the program, were also really enthusiastic about being in the painting. Um, and then, you know, I painted sort of the view outside my window, but also uh, the World Trade Center. And then also when we first arrived at the residency, we were all asked to give, you know, like a quote um, and also just like a quote for the website. And since I'm sort of exiting this place and moving studios next week, I, that was like the quote that I, saw, that I thought really reflected sort of what we were, I mean, trying to do here, just like a group of people running this residency and like seeing it like get off the ground. What is a typical day like for you? Uh, do you have any studio rituals you'd be willing to share? Okay, typical day like for me, I wake up I eat food and I have to have a coffee. And then I basically like shower and get out of the door. Um, I try to like, I don't know, I look at my emails and I'm like, oh, emails. <laughs> but I actually try to do a lot of the emails in the car and that's why sometimes they're like sent from iPhone. They're a little bit janky. Um, or I just like, I don't know, sometimes I get these emails that I like don't actually know how to reply to. So I just like archive. <laughs> anyway, hope I get back to them. Um, then I get to the studio and then basically I feel like I just like try to work from like one or two until like 10. I don't know. And then I sort of like disappear into this wormhole during that time. You're just like, I don't know, time just disappeared. You're like, where did it go? And then you kind of like emerge at like 10 and you're like, uh, like, why did I do this to myself? Um, and then I clean up, which surprisingly takes like always an hour. And then by the time I leave the studio, it's either like one or like two in the morning. And, um, but I don't know if these hours are like, they've always been like this in college. It was these hours in high school it was these hours. So I guess I just function on these hours. <laughs> Um, and then the second question is, oh, any rituals? Mm, honestly, I feel like the coffee. Oh, oh no, I have this terrible addiction to uh, Ricola drops. The lemon ones, I have to have one every day. And if I don't have one, I get really paranoid. And 
I think like, I don't know, I just get really paranoid. Like I have to have one while I'm painting. So when I buy these <laughs> Ricola drops, like, you know, most people get them in like pack of 10 or like 25, but I go to buy them like a pack of 500. And then that's when I'm like, all right, I have a problem. But um, you know what? I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do alcohol. So I guess it's gotta go somewhere. <laughs> Can you talk about silver art projects and what it's like to be a resident artist? Um, I think silver art projects is a pretty magical playground unicorn kind of place. Um, I mean, we're only like the second year, so it's a new residency. It feels a bit like we work sort of, you know, everyone gets their cubicle and you make work in it. Um, and I think when we all first got here, we were a little bit nervous about the open floor plan situation. But I have to tell you, there are lots of benefits to that in that, you know, like when you take a curator around or a gallerist, you can also share other people's work, which I think is great. And, um, and also you learn from like how other people are working, like how other people manage artist assistants or like what their schedules are like. Um, and um, I think my favorite days are the days where you're like, oh my God, she's making work so fast. <laughs> and then, like, it makes you like run back to your studio and you're like, gotta paint faster. Cause, um, so yeah. Um, um, yeah, community. I mean, being in the world trade neighborhood, being in a building that came up after like an aftermath of disaster, it really sort of like, I don't know, grounds your perspective um that kind of thing everyone should apply <laughs> tell me what you like about painting why did you choose painting yeah you know i think um i don't want to say it's a mental problem but when you're when i'm not painting i actually do think about painting um so um i don't know it just feels like something you have to do it's kind of like an addiction i guess um, but what I do, what I love about painting is, I don't know, it's like the search, the, the ultimate search for freedom, um, for truth. And sometimes there are like things in your mind that you can't, like, you don't really get out and it just comes out in the painting. Like I have never thought of myself as like either like a confrontational or a, um, like a political person i like growing up it was always like no politics like don't talk about things that are controversial um you know like be a good asian girl that kind of thing and then so sometimes seeing these paintings i'm like oh i don't know where that's coming from but it's just like vomiting out um and yeah your practice in portraiture involves painting live subjects and you do an amazing job bringing their personalities to life how do you capture that essence in your sessions with them? Um, one of my favorite things about painting people in person, and I really believe there is a difference between painting someone in real life versus from a photograph or even on Zoom, which I did quite a bit of last year. And it's just like their aura comes through, you know, they show up in outfits that you sometimes don't really imagine and it makes its way into the painting. Um, they're, I don't know, even just like the way light reflects against someone's like eyebrows or like, you know, the color of their eyes or something. Like all of that kind of comes through. Um, so I do love that about being able to work with someone in person. Uh, how did you decide what you wanted to show at the Aldridge? Well, the Aldridge, it is a show with a group of women artists um, I think for me, just like on the last like two years of work, working with like, with the idea of like representation and, you know, a lot of work being like, oh, it would be really cool if like a young person like saw themselves on the walls of a museum. Um, someone like I went to like a, a Charles White exhibition at the Art Institute in Chicago. I remember seeing like a group of high school students um you know like looking at these works and i and i do think it makes a difference when you're able to see yourself and you know when i go to a museum it's like you know western art history a lot of like white male painters nothing wrong with that it was the times you know who could who was allowed to go to art school um and so i was like oh this is my first time showing at a museum 
how cool would it be if, you know, some sort of young Asian American kids could, and also like a lot of these kids are also like immigrant kids with parents who can't speak English, which I guess I personally also relate to. Um, so I was like, it'd be cool to make a painting that involved them, that, you know, we could take a trip together up to the museum to see. Um, a lot of these kids have never been into like an art studio before. So it was a great opportunity to have them come in and be like, oh, this could be a job. Although I'm like, could this be a job? <laughs> but um, yeah, so it was great to just like make a painting with a community and bring it to the museum to a community show. <laughs> Uh, this summer, or just most recently, I started making these flower paintings, and so here's a flower painting, there are more flower paintings over there. Flowers are, you know, they're pretty freeing and uh, low stakes, low key, um, but I really wanted to try this cake piping thing for like quite a while, and uh, because these flower paintings are on a smaller canvas, so lower stakes at risk, um, it really allowed me to sort of play around with this cake piping situation, experimentation with surfaces and different mediums. Um, I was also thinking of the letter that Sol LeWitt wrote to Eva Hess. I don't know if you know it, but it's basically Eva like whining and complaining and Sol LeWitt's like, lady, you need to like stop freaking out <laughs> like, and, and just do. I feel like I don't know, also like in this day and age where with like social media and fast technology and also like the older you get, not that I'm old, but this over, like, I don't know, overthinking. It's just like, it's like easier, I guess. Anyway, so I just sort of imagined like Eva Hess like waking up in the morning to her, like a bouquet of flowers uh, from Solo It with her little Just Do card. And I was like, maybe they're like motivational Monday self-care flower paintings. Um, so <clears throat> anyway, I made a couple of those. Um, and yeah, just the cake piping thing is really fun. And, um, and then for one of the last paintings, I did one of, um, instead of a Just Do card, I did like a Kit Kat because I don't know, it's kind of like a bad inside joke with myself. <laughs> it's like Eva Hess wakes up in the morning and she's like, nah, like Kit Kat, take a break. <laughs> so she's so bad. But whatever, I'm like, okay, I crack myself up in the studio because I'm just like here by myself all the time. So like, who else are you going to talk to? I can talk about this painting too, which is going into a uh, show at Jeffrey Deitch in LA. It opens in September, um, and basically it's the second version of the show Wonder Women curated by Kathy Huang. And so I actually made Kathy come into the studio to be in the painting. To be honest, she came in on a full moon, so I'm like <laughs> not sure how I feel about that. But <laughs> I had some paintings from the first show like in the painting, and like she called me one day and she was like, I sold your painting, and I was like imagining her at the gallery. Um, and I was also thinking of like Roy Lichtenstein, all the like paintings he did of like women sort of like on the phone, crying on the phone. Um, and so I was like thinking about like Kathy, like either like the collector's making her cry or she's making the collector cry. Um, and I also put in all the names of the artists who are going to be in the show. Um, there's gonna be 40 artists. So I don't know, I thought, yeah. And she has a lasso cause it's Wonder Woman. So before I started painting, um, I actually, you know, like you have ideas in your mind and you just, you know, I just like, you get them out on paper. And a lot of times like these ideas actually come to you like when you're outside of the studio, you know, like when you're in the shower or you're like daydreaming or you're like on the bus or something like that. Um, and <clears throat> so like, I don't know, you like see it in your head and it's like good to like get it out on paper. So for like, uh, the painting of Kathy. I did like these two sort of versions of like Wonder Woman, the gallery. I actually feel like I did those like on an airplane. <laughs> um, and then I took pictures of them on my iPhone and sent it to her and I was like, hey, do you want to be my painting? And she was like, sure. <laughs> um, and then for the group portrait I did of my, um, you know, silver art peers, um, I also started with these black and white drawings. And at first everyone had bodies, but then later on I realized I was like, oh, 
the bodies might not totally be necessary um but also just in terms of like timeline i was like oh i only have like two months left at this residency like what is realistic for me to be able to accomplish like within that time i also went through this phase of just being really obsessed with dutch golden age portraitures or like group portraits and um how i think well, one, Amsterdam was like the world superpower at the time, which is fascinating. And a lot of times they made decisions in groups and it wasn't so much more like there's like a president or like a leader or um, it was just a little, I don't know, a little more democratic. So many of the paintings then were, you know, about religion. And I thought it was cool that these group portraits, you know, like everyone's kind of like on the same level. It's like not that much about hierarchy. Anyway, so thinking about those group portraits, while making these group portraits. How do you describe your personal aesthetic and does it match your paintings? I, I think personal aesthetic really does, and I think this is like artist to artist too, it's informed by sort of like the things that you see, the things you grew up with, the things that you consume, like even like from reading to like, I, and also sometimes I'm like, oh, artists and florists are actually like very similar, you know, like each florist has their own like personal taste of like how a bouquet should look like. And some days I'm like, I could, I don't know, take a year off and be a florist. <laughs> what are you most inspired or influenced by right now? Um, I feel like, you know, being at this residency this year, especially just like I don't know, it feels like we're like a little bit of like a group of like working bees in a little beehive. And so I've been like making these community portraits and I think it, I mean, part of it does help in that I'm like surrounded by a community of artists. And so like something I've been thinking a lot about is like, I don't know, also being in New York City, we're all just like working bees, <laughs> like from like dawn till dusk, you know, everyone's a working bee. Um, and I think, you know, like working with these community groups, like this idea of like how people work or like why, like what motivates people to come together, like what, you know, what kind of motivations like bring people together. All of that is like really fascinating to me. How do you manage your work-life balance as an artist? Um, I want to say I don't. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> don't have work-life balance. Um, you know, actually, I think right now I do work like six days a week. And, but even in college, I don't know. I've always, I guess I like working. I should see a therapist about this. It could be a problem. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think the problem, especially for painters, is that like you are painting about life. And if you don't have lived experiences, you, you don't have anything to paint about. So sometimes it's actually bad for you to always be in the studio because like, what, what the hell are you gonna paint about? So um, it's healthy to get out because then you can actually make paintings about your lived experiences. Um, but um, I'll let you know if I find a good balance between work-life balance because I don't have a good answer yet. <laughs> Uh, tell me about your techniques for overcoming creative blocks. Oh, actually, now that I think about it, I do, like, whenever I have an idea, I'll, like, write it on a post-it note, and then I'll have this mini wall of, like, all these different painting ideas on, like, these different post-it notes. However, what I found is that usually when, like, you have a vision in your head and you're, like, most excited about the idea, it's like easier to make that painting. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you put that post-it note up and it like a couple of months have gone by and like that vision starts to fade and you're like not excited about it anymore, then you're like, drafts, I missed it. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like drafts, I missed that window of opportunity. Tell me the best thing about being an artist. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you're broke all the time no okay um best thing of, oh you know what i am in a job that i wake up every day and i'm like super excited like i'm alive you know though i don't think you have to be a painter to feel alive like you can get a dog <laughs> like it's just like an easier like i don't know uh, what do you hope to accomplish as an artist what are your goals um to survive <laughs> 
<laughs> just survive this in the long haul, you know, like, <laughs> it's like really, in, it's like really intense. And like, so really right now I'm just taking it sort of like show by show or like even just like year by year. I do think right now is a time where there's like a lot of speculation on young artists. And so you really have to like, I don't know, it can be very easy to get like sucked into the like, 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 um, like now, what, what is like Instagram, like instant gratification. Like I want this, I want this now, but actually like you want to be able to like pace yourself, you know, so that when you're 80, you're still, <laughs> could still do this. Definitely. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> uh, what is your most important artist tool? Is there something you can't live without in the studio? Besides for your cough drops. <laughs> yes, I was going to say the cough <laughs> drops. Um, oh, you know what? I do have, wait, now if I carry like a saw, <laughs> but I do have this, this lucky size zero blue brush. <laughs> I don't know. What was the question? Oh, what can I not live without? You know, I have to say, and also it might just be because this has a blue handle and nothing else does. So I'm very fond of this brush. Um, we kind of just talked about Instagram a little bit, but I wanted to, I also like to ask this question to artists, like, how do you feel about quote unquote marketing yourself, like Instagram? Like, how do you feel about this? Um, I have to say that, I don't know. I think it differs from artist to artist. Like some things that I get a little bit exhausted by sometimes it's like, you know, like if you work for a company or you have like something to sort of hide behind. Like, I don't know, even if it's like the company name or something. But when you're like the artist and you're making the work and like your name, like, you're always just like, talking about yourself. You know, like if I had to talk about Susan Tran one more time, like I'm like, just gonna throw up. Like there are those days where I'm just like, I'm so sick of myself. Um, but I think, I don't know. It's like you're a young artist, right? And I don't know, like I have friends who are making like incredible, incredible work, but like they don't share it on Instagram or they're, or like even like on a website and you know, they'll be like, oh, I'm not getting any shows. And in my mind, I'm like, it's because no one knows you exist. <laughs> and like, I do think you have to put yourself out there. And you know, even those like, those newsletters <laughs> that you don't want to send, like I don't like sending those newsletters, but it's basically being like, you pop into someone's inbox and you're like, I'm still alive. <laughs> like, I'm not dead yet and I'm still making art. And like, you know, every year it's like, I'm still alive. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, I think Instagram is kind of like the LinkedIn, right? Of like the mm -hmm. art world. Um, you don't really have a choice. <laughs> you have to be on there. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of talking about yourself, um, tell me about a painting that you made that you're proud of. <laughs> I'm really pulling out the positivity um, in you today. A painting that I made that I'm proud of. You know, I have to say, I made this naked sort of like nude painting of myself one time and I sent it to my family and they were all like, <laughs> they were like why'd you do this? My mom was like, you need to burn this. Like no one can see this. And I was like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> Um, I don't know, pretty, like, pretty proud of that one. <laughs> what do you think is the most ridiculous thing about the art world? Um, I feel like for me, coming from, like, the viewpoint of the artist, it's that there is a serious lack of transparency when it comes to just, like, how the industry works. But I'm starting to think that because it's very much just like, I don't know, painting by painting, artist by artist. You know what it is? It's like the lack of, um, you know, in other industries, I wanna say there's like a baseline of standards. I think in this one, it's a bit like a circus. I feel like I'm in a circus sometimes. It's very much like negotiating, like, you know, but also, you know, the other problem is I think artists like sometimes just don't have a choice and they, they don't have the power and they don't have leverage. And that's really, really hard. So 
but yeah, I, I think it would be nice if we found ourselves in a place that was just a little less circusy. <laughs> <laughs> less circus, less lions. <laughs> yeah, less lions. Okay, last question. What's next? Uh, what's next? I am moving studios next week for the eighth year in a row. Um, I am doing a group group booth with Night Gallery at Freeze London in October. Um, and then, I don't know, even just like coming up with the idea for a new body of work, like doesn't happen overnight. Having to take a little time to like think about where to go next with your work. You know, we'll see, but there will be crying involved <laughs> for sure. 